Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we'll be setting up a streamer node on a virtual private server. So let's take a look. So what is Streamer? Streamer is a peer-to-peer -peer platform that allows users to tokenize data. This is gonna be useful in IoT environments where devices can gather information about the surrounding environment and turn around that data and monetize it. The data itself can be stored on community-owned nodes. And this is another way that you can own crypto by hosting a node. And that's what we'll be doing today. We'll be setting up a streamer node on a virtual private server. And for more details on the project, what I'll do is I'll link the white paper in the description below so you can do a deep dive if that interests you. To set up a node on a virtual private server, there's a few things that you're gonna need to know. So there's two different setups that we're gonna be looking at right now. If you're gonna be doing a single node versus multiple nodes, and on a single node, you're gonna need at least one virtual CPU, 512 megs of RAM, and 500 gigs of bandwidth. For multiple nodes, I believe you can go up to five on one IP. You'll need one virtual CPU, one gig of RAM, and one terabyte of bandwidth. Now these are approximate specs, and this is what I've gathered from some documentation. Uh, they're a little bit flexible. In this example, I'll be setting up the VPS on a DigitalOcean server. You can also use Vulture or Rackner or anything else you're comfortable with. I'll make sure I link these services in the description below. Feel free to use my links or use whatever server you'd like. Here are the steps to install the node. First, we'll be activating a VPS service. Next, we'll create and log into a server. Then we'll be installing Docker. Right after that, we'll be installing and configuring the streamer node. Next, we'll set up MetaMask and add the Polygon network to it. And lastly, we'll be buying some data tokens and staking them. If you find this guide useful, you can do me a favor by smashing that like button. What it does is it helps you reach as many users as possible, and I greatly appreciate that. So let's go ahead and set up a streamer node. So in this example, we're gonna be using DigitalOcean. We're gonna be using a very basic packet that they have over here, which is a virtual machine with one CPU, one gig of memory, 25 gigs of storage, and one terabyte of bandwidth, which is gonna be about $5 a month. It's a very cost-effective way of doing this. Now, if you're not comfortable with this one, I'll give you some other options like Vulture or Racknerd. Uh, also very low cost, excellent options. So you select whatever you're more comfortable with. I'll have a link in the description below so you can get a credit to your accounts, if, especially if you're just trying this out. So there's no up upfront cost for that. The and once you have signed in, you'll get to the main page like I have right over here. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna deploy a virtual machine. So we're gonna select the option right over here. So the first option is to select the image that you wanna use. We're gonna be using Ubuntu 20.04 and we'll be using a basic shared CPU. We'll scroll down a bit over here. So for the options over CPU, you can just use a regular SSD. You can also use a premium Intel if you want. It'll be a little bit faster. Uh, in this case, I don't think we really require the maximum performance, but then you can go ahead and select whatever options uh, you're more comfortable with. In this example, I'm just going to do low cost. So $5 a month, we're going to be using a regular SSD and you can scroll down a little bit further here. And then you just select the location that you want to do it. You can select any country that you want. I'm going to use Toronto just because it's local to me. And then it has a default name. I'm fine with the default name there because I'm not going to be setting up anything other than that. I'm going to be using a root password. If you want to set up SSH keys, you can go ahead and do that. It's a more secure approach to that. And now you can go ahead and assign a root password for the server. Uh, and I'll do that right now. Okay, and once you have your password entered, you can scroll down to the next option. You can select additional options like enabling backups, which is probably a good idea to have a backup of your server. And then they have these other monitoring options available. And then we're gonna scroll down a little bit over here and we're gonna be finalizing it. So we're just creating one droplet right now. And then we have the host name. It's all default over here. And if you wanna give it a tag, I'm gonna put mine in as streamer just because that's what this is. Now I don't have a project and I don't have a team. So I'm just gonna be leaving that as is. And then I can go ahead and click on create droplet. All right, so our server is now created. You can see that there's a credit up here for $100, and I'll make sure I link that in the description below so you get a credit if you're trying this out. Okay, so mine has now been deployed. It's giving me an IP address, and it also has other options to mount volumes or create backups. So now that we have the IP address, we just have to go ahead and log into our server. So we can do that by uh, using PuTTY. So I can go ahead and open up my PuTTY. And if you don't have PuTTY, it's a free download and I'll make sure I link that in the description below. So I have PuTTY open over here. What I'm gonna need is my IP address. So I'll go ahead and I'll be back at this window. I'm just gonna click on copy and I can go into PuTTY inside here. And then we need to provide it a username and password. Okay, so let me just minimize this window over here. We have PuTTY and I'll click on open. So we get a prompt over here. It's a security prompt. We can accept it and it's gonna ask you to log in. And now you're gonna type in your root username and then the password that you had just created. So let's make sure the window's active and then paste it in and then hit enter. And there we go. So we're logged into our server and now we can continue with the next step. 
Okay, and the first thing that we're gonna do now that we're logged in is we're gonna be installing Docker. I'm gonna be making sure I link this in the description below. To install Docker, there's a convenient package and all you have to do is paste in two lines. So the first one is gonna be this curl dash F S S L H T P S and it's get Docker. And um, let me just expand this a bit here so you can see it, that looks good. Okay, so we're gonna put in the first line and that is to get Docker. And then we'll go ahead and hit enter and that ran. Okay, now that the machine is prepped, we can go ahead and paste in the second line, which is sudo sh get docker dot sh. And we're gonna go ahead and hit enter. And now it's gonna install Docker. We'll just give it a moment while it does that. Okay, and that is now completed. It actually just took a couple minutes, not very long. Uh, so here, this is what it's gonna look like after Docker has been installed. And just to confirm that everything is in here, we can just check the Docker version that we have. And you can do that by typing in docker dash dash version and then hit enter, perfect. So we can see that Docker is running on our VPS. We can head over to the next step. Before we create our node, what we wanna do is create a directory or a folder for our files. And we're gonna do that by just pasting in this command, which is mkdir, uh, that's make directory, and then the directory name is gonna be streamer docker, and then go ahead and hit enter. Now, all these instructions are taken directly out of the official documentation. I'll link that in the description below. So with the directory made, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna be configuring our docker by running the configuration wizard, and we'll just paste in another line in here. This line is also in the official documentation, you can see it's automatically going to go ahead and download the components required and extract all the files. Okay, so that was fairly quick and now we're ready to head over to the next step. So the first question is, do you want to create a private key or do you want to import an existing one? I don't recommend importing anything, definitely create a new one. So it's gonna be the first option over here. You can just go ahead and hit enter on your keyboard. And now it's just saying that they strongly recommend that you back up your private key and we're definitely gonna be doing that. But it'll also be in the configuration file. And what we want to do is get ready to copy it down. So we can just say yes to this, hit enter. And here is our private key. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this. Okay, so now now that I have that recorded, it's gonna now ask about uh, running some ports and we can just say yes to all these or just hit enter. So yes, enter, enter. And do you wanna participate in mining and staking? Absolutely, yes, and then hit enter. And now it's letting you know where the configuration file will be. So this is the path that you'll find if you need to find your a private key later on. So it's gonna be in the streamer folder inside another folder called configuration and in the default file listed here. You can save this path in the same file where you're keeping all your uh, personal information, uh, but it is a default one, so it's easy to find later on. So you can go ahead and hit enter to that. So our node is now created. Mine is called Paddle Women Enough. And now I have a URL over here where I can find it. Uh, I can copy and paste this URL over here in my browser where it'll load up the statistics for my node. That usually takes a few minutes for it to populate uh, on the database. So it may not work right away, completely normal. Give it like 10 or 15 minutes and it'll show up. Uh, so what I'll do is I'm just gonna copy this path uh, just so I have a record of it, keep it all in the same spot. So now that the node is configured and completed, we just need to start it up. So the last command that we're gonna be running is gonna be this one. And then once you have that pasted in, you can hit enter and it'll start the node. So the tracker connector is listed in here. That means our node is up and running. You can close the window now, you don't have to leave this open. So what we can do now is we can go ahead and stake some data tokens so we can start mining and earning and we'll jump over to that next step. And I'm gonna open up my browser here and I'm at the MetaMask website. So I'm gonna go ahead and install this by clicking on the download button over here. I'm using Chrome, so I'm gonna select Chrome and we'll scroll down a little bit further here and install MetaMask. Add it to Chrome, click on add extension, and there we go. So we have our MetaMask wallet installed, so I'll click on get started. So now if you already have a MetaMask wallet, you can import your wallet, but if you're starting from scratch, we're gonna click on create a new wallet, and then we can say, I agree, and we give it a password here, and then we can select the terms of use and then click on create. And now it's talking about securing a wallet. So it's gonna give you a secret phrase. You wanna make sure that you keep this in a secure location. And then what you're gonna do is repeat it back. And we have the MetaMask wallet all set up and ready to go. So we'll click on that and we can just close out of this. And here is our wallet. To stake streamer, we need to make sure that we're on the Polygon network. And by default, the Polygon network is not here. So we have to add that network. And here are the settings for the Polygon mainnet. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy that in and I'll be adding a new network and I'll paste it in over here. Okay, and now we have all the information added in here, so we can click on save. So now we're gonna go ahead and open up our MetaMask and we're gonna be importing our wallet. We're gonna select import, and we're gonna put in the private key that we just got from our node, paste it in there, 
and then click on import. And there we go. So now it's imported. Matic is added. And now what you want to do is send some Matic to this wallet. So then you can go ahead to any exchange, purchase Matic, and then send it to your MetaMask wallet address. And now what we're going to do is we're going to be swapping the Matic for data tokens. So now we're in quick swap and we're going to go ahead and we're going to exchange for data tokens. We have Matic selected right now and we're going to be selecting the data token. So I'm going to get the address for data tokens. I'm going to paste that in here. And here is the data token. I'm going to click on add. Okay, we have it there. And now we have the data token listed. And what I'm also going to do is I'm going to add it to MetaMask so I can easily find it. So I'll click on assets and import the token, paste the same address in here. It's going to auto populate the other fields, click on add and then import. And there we go. So we have Matic right now and we have data right now. And I want 10,000 data tokens. So I'm going to do 553 Matic, which will give me just over 10,000 data. 10,000 is the maximum amount that we're going to be going for right now. So go ahead and click on confirm swap. And we'll also have enough Matic to cover the fees, which is just going to be a few cents to, for this to go through. And so the maximum amount that you can have, there we go. So the uh, we have 10,000 data tokens that have been confirmed and their transaction has been confirmed and it should show up in our wallet in just a moment. You go under assets, you can see that I have just under 10,000 in here. So I'm almost maxing it out. Uh, as I accumulate, I'll make sure I get to the exact 10,000 data tokens. The reason why I'm choosing 10,000 is because that's the maximum amount of data tokens you can stake per node. In order to maximize the profitability I'm putting in the most, you can have much less than that. Uh, but I'm just trying to get the most earning potentials out of each node that I'm deploying. Okay, so I'm going to go over to rubik.app right now and uh, just need to put in our address. So we have rubik right now and we can go ahead and click, click on our MetaMask wallet. So I want to make sure you select the right account, click on next and connect. And rubik is now connected and we can go and see our node. So the data tokens have not registered yet. It'll take a few moments for that to happen. Uh, what I'll do is I'll jump right back to this. Okay, I've just refreshed the page and now my tokens are now showing up here, 9,960, just shy of 10,000. So I'm pretty much maxing out my earnings potential here. And I'll just refresh it one more time. Uh, so I'm at the burpixscan.app website. And if you click over here for the profile, you'll see uh, accumulated rewards and everything else that's related to your specific account. And you can scroll down a bit here and you can see the current APY uh, for this project. So everything will accumulate in here as it goes along. I, this is my second node that I'm starting up. Uh, both have approximately 10,000 data tokens, I'm trying to max out the profit that I can. And I'll provide an update so you can see how I'm progressing along. And that's it. So we've set up our streamer node. We have staked some data tokens to it. And we're now ready to start earning some uh, crypto. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please smash that like button. And if you have any questions, you can go ahead and put them in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them. A lot of the information I got is from my friends over at the Sleep Money Club. Uh, we have a group in here, a specific one just for streamer. And there's a lot of people just talking about this specific topic. Uh, so there's a lot of discussions when things change. And if you run into a little bit of an issue, a lot of helpful people, I'll be updating my guides as we go along. I'm expecting a lot of updates on the streamer network. If you have any questions, once again, you can go ahead and put it in the comments below. Thank you for your support. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.